Hey Finksters, what's up? It's Chris, founder of Finkster.com and in today's video you're going to learn about Python's wrapper function. <laughs> so very hard to pronounce. So it consists of like four letters R, E, P, R and you can call it on any Python object. So this is this is one of one of the uh, built-in functions, this wrapper function. But so you can pass any object into the wrapper function. And now, like here's a, a simple uh, example. So you call wrapper function. You pass any object into it. Like it could be an integer, it could be a string or anything, and it gives you the string representation. So let's open a Python shell and have some some examples. I always like to uh, play with some examples before before I use a function and I think a uh, proper understanding of the wrapper function uh, will is very very helpful for you as a Python coder. I think uh, I think many many like in, even intermediate level Python coder don't know really what is the meaning what is the purpose of the wrapper function but it's ve it's it's one of those uh, very frequently used Python functions and if you don't understand it you won't be able to find some bugs that are really difficult uh, difficult to find especially um, given the nuances of the function, which I will explain further down uh, the video. Because these no nuances, I mean, if you don't know them, if you have never heard about them, uh, it will be very hard to figure them out. But if you have heard of, the, uh, of them once, like even in this video, only, only, only quick time, um, then like years, years ahead, if you if you have this nasty bug b that that happens because of your lack of the understanding of the wrapper function, you at least have something uh, to think back, and you you at least m uh, maybe think back of this video and about uh, the uh, perks of this function. Okay, so let's let's have a few like very basic example. We pass an integer value in the wrapper function; it returns a string value. We pass a string value into the wrapper function; it gives you the the re string representation and now it here note that it is different to the integer value and now we also have this string quotes the single string quotes around the uh, number 42 and this is really it really gives you a string representation of this string value so the string representation of a string is a string within a string yeah because the outer string is not part of the string representation it's just the return value of the function so the function always returns a string value um, so then we can, you can also pass like list objects and it gives you a string representation of the list objects. I mean even if you have some nested list objects, one, two, three, and then we have, so we have a list of lists, it gives you just a rep string representation of the, of the nested list objects. So this is very useful actually to, uh, sometimes you need to store data for example, you need to store lists and you, then you, if you have a list uh, string representation of, uh, you can like convert any object into into a string value and, you, and then you can save the string in files or send it over the, like over TCP connection to another Python process running on another computer or so. So you can do all kinds of stuff by converting objects to strings and strings then can be converted to bytes it can be sent to the over the network or can be stored on the computer so it's very useful to actually know how you can convert python objects to string representations um okay so then let's maybe have one more example of of uh, collection types say we have a dictionary we map alice to bob it's maybe part of a of a matching algorithm and Bob to Alice, and now we get the string representation of the dictionary. Okay, so it works beautifully um, on the default Python um, object. You even can call the, like in Python, everything is an object, even even the wrapper function <laughs> is a function object, a callable object. So any function is just a callable, any function just implements a callable interface, so you can call this object. So you can basically make any object callable in function, so then you can call any object, and any object becomes a function. Um, Good, so uh, you see uh, it gives you some information about the wrapper function, it's a built-in function wrapper. Okay, so so far so good. What happens if we define our own object? So say we have an object um, class car and the object consists of nothing yet. Okay, so it's just, an, like, it's just an empty class definition, it's just a wrapper class. So now we can pass the car so let's create a new object and we, we so here we, we we use a car constructor to create a new <coughs> object of the class car and we pass it into the wrapper function and now you see this strange representation and this is very very common output in many python shells and now you know where the output comes from um, if you if you try to uh, to to um, determine a string representation of a, of a custom object 
Python does not know anything about this object yet. It does not know like what is the correct string representation. Even if you define some variables in the in the class or for the object, it doesn't really know whether those variables should be kept secret or whether those objects are part of the string repre representation. So it basically gives you this strange thing that basically tells you three gives you three bits of information. The first bit is um, where is this ob class defined? And here it tells you it is defined in the main um, script. So basically the main script is just uh, just this um, interactive Python shell. And so it tells you where, where is it defined? What is the name of the, what is the name of this um, object? And the name, uh, what, if, what is the type name of this object? And the type name is car. And then it gives you the three third information, which is the memory location of this object. So this one is a hexadecimal number and it tells you the memory location. So in your computer, the memory location of this object. Okay, so these are the three bits of information that can be determined for any object. And you see these um, objects of class car don't have any methods defined. They don't have any attributes. They don't have, uh, they don't, uh, don't have anything, but still they inherit from object. Okay. Uh, from the, from the, like the, the top level object uh, class, uh, because all objects inherit from top level object class. And all of those have already defined uh, this, uh, all of this, all of those have already defined the underscore underscore wrapper underscore underscore method. Um, which I will show you in a moment, uh, that basically is called when you pass any object into the wrapper function. So let's have an example. So basically if you have, uh, if you have this, um, this call wrapper on any object, it gives you class object. This is the same as calling object dot underscore underscore wrapper underscore underscore. So this, this is called a dunder method because it has double underscores around them. And those, this is those of, uh, one of those Python methods that can be defined for any object. And the wrapper function is defined on any object. So it is used as a fallback for any string conversion routine, uh, of any object, uh, if you have defined it or not. Okay. Um, Okay, it uh, needs an argument, so we need to. Um, um, okay, so this was a bad example because I should have I should have uh, called this one. Okay, so this one, for example, so it doesn't work on the object, but on the to top level object, but it works on basically any other object. Um, you can call the under wrapper uh, function, and it gives you a string representation. So if you can do this, you can also define your own class and override the wrapper function. Okay, so for example, we can do this like this. So uh, def wrapper underscore underscore. We always have to pass a uh, reference to the uh, object itself and we can return, um, say, any string representation. So, so we have a car, so we maybe return black Tesla as a, as a string representation of our car. And now if we pass our car into the wrapper function, it gives you black Tesla. Okay, so it, so it uh, works you beautifully. You can customize for your own custom object. You can, um, you can de determine the default string representation of those objects. But usually the string representation, representation just includes this, these types of information. Okay, and there's, there's one, one perk which I have referred to in the beginning of this video. And this is um, if you also define the string representation of, of an object. So like um, in this case, maybe maybe let's, ha let's first have another example. So if you call the built-in function string on a new car object, it will also give you the um, return value black Tesla. Why is that? So basically the built-in string um, function internally calls cars.string function, okay? Um, so internally, so this string function is just a, it's just a, a more convenient way of writing this thing. So we have the object, we create the object and we call the, the dunder string method um, on this object. And the dunder string method is also implemented for all objects. But if you don't explicitly override the string conversion routine for an object, it will just fall back on the wrapper function, wrapper method. Yeah, that is defined for all objects. And here we have overwritten the wrapper uh, method. So it will just return. So th basically the wrapper method is a fallback for the string function if the dunder string method is not defined by the user. But this also mean, means that even if you, if you override your wrapper, func wrapper method and you return 
black Tesla as a, as a result. So this is this is what you would expect um, to to be the output of the string conversion routine. But now if you also define the string method and you return silver Porsche. Now let's let's pass the a new car object into the string um, built-in function. So what what would you expect is the output now? You can also pause the video and think about this. Yeah, so it's not it's not 100% clear, right? Because um, I just told you that the string function internally falls back uh, into the uh, falls back to the um, wrapper method. So um, it could either give us the result of the wrapper method or the result of the string method. So it could be either black Tesla or a silver Porsche. But in this case, the return value is silver Porsche because uh, I mean the string the string func the string representation is always dominated by the string method, the Dunder string method that you define in the in the class. Okay, because I mean it also makes intuitive sense, right? If you if you convert an object to a string, if it, it first tries to call the Dunder string method, and only if the Dunder string method is not defined, it calls the Dunder wrapper method. Okay, so this is I think this is an important um, piece of information, and I hope you understood it. If not, you can just go back 30 seconds and watch it again and think about this again. Pause the video, um, and then you will quickly understand. Okay, so the the string internal the string function internally calls the wrapper function, but only if the string method the Dunder string method is not defined. If the Dunder string method is defined, it will just use the Dunder string method. Okay, that's why. I think this is one of the reasons because the string conversion function is very popular in Python. It's very it, it happens very very often that you convert an object to a string. But it happens less often that you use this, the wrapper function, the string representation function. That is usually just a, a, an object, just just gives you this this information about an object with a memory or, um, address and everything. So it, ha it happens less often that you use the wrapper uh, method, but if you use the string method on a custom object, it will fall back to the wrapper uh, function. So that's why the wrapper function really becomes very relevant because the string uh, method is very relevant. A, str a string conversion function is very relevant, and the Dunder string method therefore becomes relevant. The Dunder wrapper method also becomes relevant because it's a fallback for the string uh, method, and it uh, happens quite frequently that people get f confused which one takes precedence over the other one, and the string. Retweet, the string dunder method always takes precedence over the dunder wrapper method. You should just remember this piece of information. Okay, thanks for watching this video and uh, I hope uh, you are well and you stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye!